Dear colleagues, this is epinuclear shell in the anterior vitreous. And I have to manage this. This is a case of posterior polar cataract. The nucleus has been managed nicely. While I was trying to remove the epinucleus, a big piscerent occurred and this epinuclear shell is in the anterior vitreous now. And I'm going to manage this by posterior assisted levitation. This is 3.5 millimeter measurement. I have taken a 26 gauge disposable needle. It is going through this point and through the sparse planar and I am trying to levitate this epinuclear shell into the anterior chamber and I am trying to raise this for about one minute but I found it cumbersome just by one hand so I am going to try it by manually I have asked for a Sinsky hook yes and I'm going through the side port at 1.30 o'clock and I'm going to use two hands to bring this into the anterior chamber and I was successful Yes, Nisinski has done a marvelous job. The size of the rexis in this case is about 5 millimeter. So this epinuclear shell will sit nicely over the anterior capsular rim. Yes, this is PAL, posterior assisted levitation and now how to remove this I'm going to use a multi-piece intraocular lens as a platform as a scaffold and over that platform I'm going to remove this by a vitectomy cutter this is a row cut which is a combination of sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate. I am enlarging the main incision a little bit. So the main incision is about 3.2 millimeter now. And now I am going to place a sensor multipiece intraocular lens in the sulcus. The leading haptic will go into the sulcus. I can see the sulcus at 3 o'clock quite clearly through the microscope. Yes, the leading haptic has gone into the sulcus. The trailing haptic at this moment will be placed over the iris that is in the anterior chamber. Later on, it will be dialed into the sulcus. Yes. So, the leading haptic is in the sulcus and trailing haptic is in the anterior chamber. And now, I am using vitrectomy cutter, 20, 20 gauze cutter and using this cutter to remove this epinucleus because there can be a lot of vitreous strands all around and I didn't feel it safe to use FICO handpiece so it is always safe to use vitrectomy cutter for epinucleus for nucleus we have to use ultrasound in those cases, we have to use this cutter first, make the nucleus free, and then use ultrasonic energy. Then use the FACO handpiece. At this moment, I'm going behind the lens and removing the epinuclear 
material cortical material which is there in the anterior vitreous yes it is coming very nicely and see this yes at this moment at nine o'clock lot of cortical matter came so this has been a very satisfactory cleaning of cortical matter and at the same time anterior vitrectomy you can see some vitreous strands coming to the main incision so i went through the left side port and managed those vitreous strands yes now there is no vitreous strands at this near the main incision and we can see some cortical matter at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock I'm using 23 gauze simco to remove this yes since there is no vitreous strands around we can safely use this instrument now And now I am injecting viscoelastic substance and you can see one half tick is at nine o'clock, it is in the sulcus. The other half tick is over the iris, it is being dialed and placed in the sulcus. Yes. it has gone into the sulcus and now to remove the viscoelastic substance again I am using cutter, vitrectomy cutter in this case I didn't use Tramsinolone acetate. I used pilocarpine and confirmed that there is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber. Now I hydrated the side ports and concluded the case. This is how it looked after I used pilocarpine. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills.